Hey everybody, Justin Cena here. Super excited to show you this walkthrough. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to go from uh, basically starting from scratch to having your own e-commerce store and making your first uh, sales. So um, we're right here on the Shopify homepage and we are going to uh, just get started, jump right into it and actually get started and build our store. So um, a little bit before uh, we start building the store, obviously we're going to talk about and uh, think about some niche research. You know, we want to pick what niche we're going to run. And I recommend kind of starting with a niche store rather than something general so you could really kind of hone your focus on one thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to build a golf store. So we're going to be targeting people who like golfing. You know, they like watching golf. They like playing golf. Um, you know, they eat, sleep, live golf. That's the that's our target customer. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, later, you know, how we can prove that, um, you know, that's a good niche to enter. But, you know, big niches like golf, you know, that's that's pretty obvious, right? You know, you see big golf stores. Of course, you know, people that are super passionate about golf. That's always something to think about, you know, how passionate is someone about a certain niche the more passionate the better but we know that golf is a good uh you know a good niche to try but again a little bit later i'll show you how we can prove that out inside of facebook ads even before we spend a dollar just to prove that there is a um you know a big enough targetable audience but anyway we're going to start off with golf so uh, like i said we're on the shopify homepage. i'm going to show you just how easy in a matter of minutes we'll have our store up and running and ready to go you know accept credit cards accept paypal etc etc so let's get started. All you need to do on the Shopify uh, homepage is just press start your free trial. And we're going to run through and just start up our own store. So I'm just entering in some info here. And I'm going to call this store Golf is Life. Or someone already has it. How about uh, Golf Fanatics? And, uh, you know, we could change this name later. This is just basically going to be the URL to the back end of our store. So I'm just going to call it Golf Fanatics Store. No big deal. You know, we could change it later if we want. Um, we're going to hook a, uh, a custom domain up to it, of course. So we want to, um, you know, we don't want to worry too much about this name. So we're going to keep running through. And just quickly uh, put in all the info here. Okay. Okay, running through. You know, we're just filling in the information. This is just basically uh, building our first store. You could pretty much put anything in here. It's, it's uh, you know, really not a big deal. And once you press enter my store, Shopify is going to build it. So, you know, just fill out the form as you see it. And now we're at our, um, our Shopify homepage. So this is going to be your dashboard. This is kind of going to be mission control for you. This is where you're going to see, obviously, once, uh, you know, once we get started, once you start having traffic, it's going to show you right on here how many people have visited your site. Uh, how much revenue you have for the day and a lot of other great information. So take a look at the URL. Uh, here is your admin side of things. You know, this is your big admin panel. I'm going to run through most of the important things here in a minute. Um, here on the home page, the first thing that we need to do is answer this question. Where would we like to start selling? And of course, we want to have an online store. So uh, this is a new thing with Shopify. If you've done Shopify before, you probably didn't have to create an online store. It just came with it. But now all we have to do is simply press add online store. It's going to install the store in the back end, and now we are going to set, start out and pick a theme. So I'll launch your online store, select a free theme. Now here is the Shopify theme uh, library. There's also paid themes available from Shopify. There's also paid themes available from uh, third-party developers. I recommend, especially when you're getting started, just pick a theme here. I'm going to tell you that I like Brooklyn the best. We'll install that in a second. But the uh, reason being is that they actually have some real great chat support. So you see down here, you can click in and actually go to Shopify live chat and it's uh, 935 Pacific time right now and they're still working. So they have some really great uh, chat support. And if you pick one of these uh, official free themes, most chat support agents can actually help you even in as far as going into the code and helping you kind of figure out if you do need to make some changes to the code for some reason, they can help you out, uh, you know, and tell you how to do that. So I definitely recommend just, you know, going simple, sticking with a free theme. Um, you know, I have stores, six, seven figure stores that are using free themes. So don't at all think that you need to spend thousands of dollars on development. These are some really good options. Here's Brooklyn. You know, this is my favorite one. A couple other ones. Uh, this is a pretty nice one as well. Uh, this one's going to be just super easy. The reason I like Brooklyn is it's easy to use, easy to manipulate, but uh, more so it was designed for mobile first. 
it looks great on mobile and you know if you um if you've done any advertising uh specifically on facebook ads which we're going to use to drive traffic to our store um, you're going to see a huge majority of that traffic being mobile i'm seeing about 80 to 85 percent of my traffic uh, being mobile so here we go we're going to click on the brooklyn theme we can look at a demo real quick this is what it will look like um, you know just in terms of, uh, of a, a fully built out store so you see it relies on a nice big image so that's going to be a strong point again on mobile it looks really nice so uh, just scrolling through it looks like we can do some featured collections and some uh, maybe a tagline or something like that these are all going to be editable without even needing to touch the code so it's great you know you're gonna have tons of different options all we need to do is just drop in a big image you know we could use a text logo or we can get a logo designed set up the navigation great it's gonna have everything that we need so let's publish this theme and just in a few clicks, it's going to install it. And uh, just in a few seconds, we'll actually have a live site. So now we're taking a look at our site here, Golf Fanatic Store. I'm just going to close this little admin bar. And uh, yeah, here you go. Here is an actual store. So, you know, just like, uh, you know, five minutes in, we already have a store live. So, you know, forget about thinking about learning to code and building your own site and all that kind of stuff. You know, don't worry about it. If it takes five minutes and you have a fully functional store. We have a shopping cart already. We have full e-commerce functionality, so we're ready to go. Now we just want to customize the look and feel of our site. So again, you don't need to be a designer to do this. You don't need code. It's super, you know, super easy on Shopify. We're just here in our back end again, and we're under the online store section, and we're going to go into themes. So uh, we just installed the Brooklyn theme, as you saw. So now we're going to go over here and click Customize Theme. And this is going to bring us into our theme panel. So you see over here, there's all these different options and they control different parts of the theme. And remember that you shouldn't really need to do any type of code work um, to get your, your website up and running. Apart from some you know, small things like Facebook pixels, for the most part, you're just going to be dealing in terms of customization, just dealing with this type of stuff. So let's run through all these and just kind of get started. So uh, here is a section for us to uh, create a color scheme for our site. And again, we're talking about a golf store. So, uh, you know, kind of colors that would come to mind, obviously, would be greens, right? We want to have like, a, a, you know, you always associate that nice green color with golf. So I'm thinking that we might want to do something there. But um, before we kind of do that, let's go and, uh, and add a logo. So uh, we have the opportunity to either add a text logo here or an actual custom logo. And we definitely want to uh, build a custom logo. You know, that's super important. So we could actually do that just by going to Google. And what I like to do is go to a site called uh, Freepick, freepick.com, and that's going to give you some templates, just specifically some logo templates that you can use. So you know we could actually even even probably go further than that. Just go right into golf logo and see if there's anything that comes up. So we want to find a logo for our store, and here's some kind of uh, some examples and. Maybe something jumps out to you. You know, I think that it's uh, most of the time a good idea to kind of get a professional to create your uh, your logo. But just for the uh, the sake of example, I'm going to use uh, something like this, just because we're making an example site here. And I'm just going to download this vector, and um, yeah, I'm going to pretty much open this up inside of Photoshop and just make a very simple logo. So uh, I'm just unzipping the file real quick, and I'm going to open up Photoshop. And I'm just going to bring over these, uh, these files. So again, if you're not a Photoshop expert, if you're not comfortable working inside of Photoshop, or you don't want to spend time in here, by all means, go and, get a, uh, you know, go and get a designer to go and create your logo. Um, definitely do not go to Fiverr, though. Right, you don't need to. You're not going to spend five dollars on a logo. You need to have a really solid first impression. So, uh, you know, with that being said, just really go for uh, go for it all. You know, go get a nice logo. It's not going to cost you thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars even. It should cost you maybe between fifty and one hundred fifty dollars to get a nice logo. And uh, remember, that's going to be really all about the first impression of your site. So, just for example sake, we're going to use um, let's use this logo. You know. I think this is a nice one. It looks, uh, it looks professional enough. Um, and maybe we'll even call our site Golf King just to make things easy for us. But again, you know, you're probably going to want to go out and get a logo designed. I have a little bit of experience in Photoshop. 
So I'm just gonna do it myself right now. Great, so we got a nice little transparent logo. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of resizing just to make it a little bit more of a manageable file. Great, we got our logo, and now I'm saving it. Um, I'm saving it into a folder real quick, so just bear with me. So we're gonna take our our, uh, our logo and we're going to use this to basically be the basis of our uh, of our design. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm actually gonna look at the colors in this logo because I want my site to um, you know match the the colors. So we have a dark green, we have a light green, black white. So cool, good enough. We have a pretty good color scheme. I'll come back to this in a second. Uh, but again, you know, just just to make things very straightforward, we want our site to uh, have a consistent logo and a consistent color scheme. So we're going to start by, uh, of course, uploading our uh, our logo. So I'm just uploading that file that I created real quick inside of Photoshop, and here you go. So now we have Golf King uh, a logo on the site, and we're already starting to look like we have a little bit more of a professional site already. So uh, there you go. We have our logo. Uh, looks like we could save here, and that's pretty much all you need to worry about in terms of the header so far. So now let's go back to the uh, to the colors and let's set up some uh, some colors of all the things here. So you see we have text in terms of black and the cool thing here is you could actually edit this live and so you see it actually changing uh, you know changing color. So we're just stick with black there. Basically I want to like look at any other accent colors like you know this gold is unnecessary and I think this would be a good place where we can pull in that green from our logo. So here's the link color. I'm going to take this, copy the, this is what's called a hex code. It's just a color code, and I'm going to replace it here. Do the same thing for this gold. You know, we don't want this gold in here anymore. I want to replace it with green. So you see the links in here. So I'm going to save it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the sale tag is right now. We know we're not seeing it here, so we could kind of just ignore it. Maybe we want to change the buttons background to also be that same green. You know, let's just do that for now. So, you know, already see, you know, so we're 10 minutes in, 12 minutes in, we have a nice logo, we have a matching color scheme. So here we go, we got our green, we got our, our similar green, green's going here. So all of a sudden, you know, 10 minutes of a, of a little bit of work and we have a pretty professional site already. We didn't have to do anything in terms of code. So Shopify, you're seeing the power right now. We're already creating a site that in my opinion, uh, you know, as a buyer, I would feel comfortable buying from this site. So let's look at typography. Uh, you know, you see here that they're using serif fonts, otherwise, you know, basically known the, not round fonts. You know, they have these little hard edges. I'm gonna change, and again, you can kind of see this live. I'm gonna change my, uh, my fonts to something which is a sans serif, basically just round. And uh, you should see some of these, here you go. So now it's round. I'm gonna change these basically all, uh, all of the fonts so they're consistent. And I think, you know, that, uh, this is just an idea about branding. You know, maybe you wanna have those uh, serif fonts. To me, the serif fonts, they don't really kind of go with uh, what I think to be, you know, golfing or sport. You know, I like to see these kind of rounded fonts. And again, I'm no designer, but, you know, I'm just kind of going by what I see on the Internet. I want to create a site where people are going to feel comfortable putting their credit card in. So I think so far we're on the right track. So we're going to run through. Let's see what other options here. So we have the home page, and I certainly do recommend the, uh, the Brooklyn theme. So what you're seeing here, you could easily be turning into your site. So here are the different sections here. And you can see them right, you know, right here live. Here's our hero slideshow or a big banner. We're going to add a big image there. We have uh, our little featured content section. We have our featured collection section. And we have our featured products. Now, maybe you just want to have featured products on the site. So all you need to do is basically just turn these off, save it. You're going to see the page reload. And all you're going to have is your big hero banner on top and your featured products on the bottom. So that's great. Um, you know, I don't think we need to overcomplicate things. We just want to show some product on the home page and a nice banner. So we're already uh, on our way there. So here are the specific section options. And here is the hero slideshow. Let's, so let's go into that. This is where, you know, it's talking about if we had multiple images here. So here's slide one, slide two, slide three, etc. They would automatically rotate every seven seconds. Now I'm just going to go for example sake. I'm just going to pull a big, uh, a big golf image that I, uh, I had found and I'm just going to create one slide. I'm not going to go uh, crazy right now just for the sake of time. You know, maybe you're going to want to spend a lot more time and actually, um, you know, build a really cool slideshow at the beginning. That's great. You know, you definitely can do that, um, you know, just for the, uh, the benefit of time here. I'm going to kind of use this, uh, this big kind of grassy golf image that I found, and I'm going to add that here. 
So all you need to do is just come here and click replace and grab this big image that you had previously found. You know, you want to find something that says, uh, you know, it needs to be at least 1200 pixels in width. Um, obviously you want it to be big enough so it fills this big uh, canvas that you have. Also the bigger the image, the nicer it's going to look on mobile. So it's uploading here. Uh, I'll give it another second. Actually, if you see down here, you could actually click and see how it's going to look on different uh, on different si uh, different uh, platforms, right? On tablet, it's going to look like that. On mobile, you know, uh, let's see, where's the image? Mobile is going to look like this. So really, really nice. You know, it looks really nice already. Um, looking good. Here's where we have the opportunity to uh, to change some text. So I'm just going to put uh, here uh, golf king. Okay. Save now. Change this to light because of our uh, of our image. So perfect. Golf King. This is how our site looks on mobile. You see our little mobile menu, which is cool. And our persistent cart. Our logo looks great. Again, here is how it looks on desktop. Really nice HD image. You know, it's going to look really strong. And logo looks nice. Pops. It's cool that we actually have the the kind of the uh, the ball here and the ball here. Looking good. So you know, we have a nice home page. Um, that's the homepage hero slideshow. You remember we turned these off, these other sections inside here. So we have uh, we could have turned on featured products, featured collections. We just decided to uh, to keep it off. So we do need to edit the featured content section here. Oh, I'm sorry, the featured product section here. And this is based on the collections. You know, so you can collections are basically just categories inside of. Uh, Shopify, so this would be uh, where you would be able to actually select what product category will get shown in this section. Obviously, we've, we haven't added any product yet. Okay, uh, now we're going to go uh, into some product page options. There's only one, and that's, you know, enable image zoom or not. I typically turn this off because on some browsers and on some platforms, it just kind of doesn't work consistently. So I turn it off. Uh, collection page. This is a page, you know, basically your category page. So if you have a category like T-shirts or a category like equipment, uh, you know, in this example, I can see us having, you know, both golf T-shirts and golf equipment. We might have categories for each one. Um, on the page, we could select either a collage or a grid view. I'm going to go grid. I'm going to turn off these other checkboxes. These will basically just show tags for the uh, product, and those are often used to um, organize your product. So you don't necessarily need to show them there. So I'll show you what this page looks like after we build a product. Obviously, right now there's no product, so we're not going to see what the collection page looks like. Then you have cart page. You just have some options here in terms of how will your cart be shown. So you might have noticed the cart slides out here. That's called a drawer cart. It's pretty cool, but the issue is, you know, on some devices it may not work perfectly. I like to always go into the page. Page basically means the shopping cart is going to be its own page. So when you click on the cart, instead of sliding out, it's just going to go into your uh, to a page. This is, uh, you know, this is the preferred way to do it to make sure that it works on every single platform. So over here you have an, uh, uh, a newsletter form, and all you need to do is create a Mailchimp account. Mailchimp is great because it's free for the first 2,000 emails, so you can easily get started on Mailchimp. And if you just click this link, it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do in terms of how to, um, you know, it shows you the requirements. Of course, you need to have a Mailchimp account. And uh, you need to create a Mailchimp list. Those are just basically, you know, that happens no matter what when you create a Mailchimp account. Remember, it's free. And then it will show you how to get the actual uh, URL that you need. You see it right here. The URL that you need to paste into this section. And what that's going to do is it's going to hook your Mailchimp list up with this sign-up box. So, again, you know, you don't need to know any coding. Now you have a really cool sign-up box on your website. It's going to automatically send those email addresses into your mailing list. And, uh, you know, it's definitely worth uh, being said, the, uh, your mailing list is a huge asset, right? Um, you're going to have tons and tons of revenue opportunities by mailing your list. So you're making it easy for them uh, and you're making it easy for you to capture those people by hooking your MailChimp list with this automatic uh, little mailing list widget here on, your, on the bottom portion of your website. So another reason why the Brooklyn theme is so great, yeah, it's free, but who cares? It's got all this great, uh, you know, functionality that any e-commerce store needs. So, um, you know, we're not going to go through the time to, to open up the Mailchimp account, but, you know, it's pretty easy, pretty quick, and you're just going to get that form action URL and paste it right in here. So we're almost done with, uh, with this section here. We're with, you know, with editing the, uh, the look and feel. We're going to go over, the last thing is um, social media accounts. So obviously we can put in our Facebook page and, you know, any of the social channels that you are going to be using. 
obviously you're going to be doing you need a Facebook page because you're going to be advertising on Facebook. So uh, I'll just pretend that this facebook.com slash Shopify is my page. And, um, you know, it's looking pretty good. Here's our Facebook link now. So this kind of automatically gets built if we were to include our our Twitter link uh, and saved it, the Twitter link would show up here as well. There you go. So uh, okay, we're moving forward. I think we're at the last yeah, the last section here. And this is just the checkout page, you can select a logo if you want, basically, you could use this your storefront logo, the, you know, this original logo that we added, this can also go on our checkout page. So we'll definitely walk through a checkout uh, after we add some product and hook in our payment processors and do all that. But uh, this was about 20 minutes and we now have a pretty nice site in my opinion. I'm going to reload our site here. Remember this is what we started with. And this is where we're landing. Really nice site, you know, no code required. Um, nice logo. I mean, pretty trustworthy, you know, for a uh, site that we took 20 minutes to create. I don't think we did a bad job in terms of making the customer feel pretty comfortable. You know, we have our nice trust uh, badges here for the credit cards and stuff like that. We have our email address, uh, I'm sorry, our email list hooked in with MailChimp. So um, yeah, that's all you need to know for for customization. Very straightforward. So again, if you want to go and change some colors, maybe you don't like the screen, you want to go darker, you just all you have to do is go back into the customized theme section. So great, that is uh, kind of half the uh, the battle for getting set up. So now I'm going to talk about uh, settings. So we're in the settings section, and basically there's all these different sections. I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. For the most part, all you're doing is filling in information. So here, you know, you're going to be entering your information, you know, all of your uh, all of your you know legal business name. If this was my actual business name, you know, my address, my business address, my email, all this stuff. So I'm just going to save on the general side. Then you're going to move over to payments. So payments, uh, the two important ones are Shopify payments up here and PayPal. So uh, the cool thing right out of the box is you have PayPal automatically enabled. So your store accepts PayPal payments with PayPal Express checkout. You might be thinking, well, I didn't even create a PayPal account. Well, that's okay. Um, whatever email address you use to register the store, it's going to accept payments. And as soon as you get your first uh, PayPal payment, it's going to send you an email with saying how to set up your account. So maybe you already have an email uh, or a PayPal account attached to this email, then you know, you're just good to go. So the next thing you need to do is configure Shopify payments. And let me say that they don't make this very easy if you're outside of the United States or Canada. So if you are, you're probably going to rely on another, uh, you know, an alternative payment method. But, um, you know, if you are in the States or in, uh, in Canada, you could easily do Shopify payments. All you got to do is just set up your Shopify payments here. I'm not going to do it here because it requires some specific information like, you know, social security number and uh, employer identification number, which is basically your business's social security number. But all you need to do is fill out this form. Um, and you know put in your banking information so you can get paid you know they're gonna give you direct deposit you could even sh be so so specific and show what gets uh, you know put on the customer billing statement so this is where you set all information again I'm not gonna do it right now because it, I have to put in my real stuff but uh, yeah this is all you need to actually kind of go and have Shopify payments created so with uh, Shopify payments you're gonna be able to accept credit cards um, you know just a, a direct you know basically they'll just enter their credit card information Right, you don't need to do anything, uh, anything crazy because the cart is already uh, set up and everything's set up. All we're doing is just enabling them to pay by credit card. So once you enable that, you're good to go on the payment side of things. You're going to have Shopify payments and you're going to have PayPal set up. So uh, you know pretty much every single type of payment credit card uh, is going to be accepted with these two payment processors set up. Now you could also do Amazon payments. You could also do uh, you know Apple Pay. Um, but, you know, I found that these two are the important ones that you want to focus on. So moving forward into the checkout uh, box, we have some options here about customer accounts. And I like to, to make them optional because I know some people like to, you know, I like to check out as guests a lot. It's just quicker. But we definitely want to give them an option if they want to uh, create an account with us. Uh, kind of up here, I leave this as is. And then over here is uh, something that you're going to want to take a look at. Um, and that's about basically pre-opting in people. And this is all about having the checkbox checked or not on the checkout uh, screen when they say, you know, uh, I agree to opt into, you know, this store's marketing promotions. Basically, you know, are you going to have the box pre-checked or, or not? So you can make that decision and save it in here. And uh, this is a place that we're going to come back to, additional contents and scripts. This is where we're going to place conversion pixel um, code. 
So maybe it's going to be our Facebook pixel, or maybe you're using some other type of ad network where they have conversion pixels. Um, you're going to place them here. And if you don't know what a conversion pixel is, it's basically a little piece of code that talks to your ad network or your tracking setup, like Google Analytics or whatever it is. And it kind of just uh, talks back and forth, gives information. Um, you know, it's called conversion tracking for a reason. It, it basically tracks the data surrounding a conversion. And the Facebook pixel is one of the most uh, most robust tracking pixels out there. So we're definitely going to want to install that. So uh, just scrolling down the page, this is a real cool section. Uh, first of all, a caveat here, don't even think about doing paid advertising without having these pages on your site. They're pretty much prerequisites for, uh, you know, kind of signing up or, or doing any advertising. You know, Facebook, you definitely need to have these pages. So the cool part about Shopify is in just three clicks, they're going to generate uh, templates for you and they're going to put in your information like your address and stuff like that. Now you're going to want to definitely go through these and you know maybe you're going to make some changes to uh, to make sure that uh, you know they make sense for you. Maybe your policy isn't 30 days maybe it's 60 days you know so you're just going to do you just change your stuff um, but this is a great template to start with. So uh, I'm just going to save it and that's all you need to, do, uh, to worry about in terms of checkout. Now we're going to move over to shipping and shipping is one that kind of gets tricky for some people. Um, basically, and you see here, there's different uh, different weights. So what Shopify does is use uh, a weight based shipping setup. So depending on the amount of total weight in the cart, so not just per product, but in terms of the total order, it's going to simply uh, calculate the total weight of all the products in the cart and then it's going to check up this uh, you know, these shipping rates uh, or these shipping rules and it's going to find the uh, the rate. So right now anything between zero and five pounds is going to be charged eight dollars. Anything between five and twenty pounds is going to be charged eighteen dollars. So let's uh, let's think about, you know, the types of items we uh, we might be selling, right? We might be selling uh, drop shipped items where we wouldn't um, really have to worry about weight much because they're drop shipping them, right? We might be selling products out of house that we're shipping ourselves. Um, you know, that's, you know, then we're going to consider weights, but I actually want you to think about the weights here differently than actually the actual product weight. I want you to think of the weights as simply as a tool to allow you to build very, very, very specific shipping rules. So I'll give you, uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say we're going to sell, um, we're going to sell, uh, some, some pieces of jewelry, you know, some golf related pieces of jewelry, or maybe we're going to sell some small, small little item, right? Uh, or maybe even more specifically, we're going to do a free plus shipping item. So we're going to charge $0 for the item. And I think we probably will do this in this case. Charge $0 for an item, but charge $9.99 for shipping. So obviously, we need to have our shipping rates fully set up to ensure that we're going to be collecting the correct amount, especially if we're doing free plus shipping. If we don't do the shipping correct and we're not charging anything for the product, then we're never going to make any money. So uh, these are, are you know kind of rules that can be adapted to how you want to do it. But uh, here's how I like to do it. I just like to use even, you know, even numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to set up, um, I'm going to basically set my rules to assume that every product is one pound. And I'm going to set these rules up for free plus shipping. So again, if you don't know what free plus shipping is, it's basically when you sell a product for free and simply collect shipping to kind of offset your cost. The idea there is, it's, uh, you know, a great way, first of all, you can make some money on it, but it's a great way to kind of get, uh, get data into your store, start getting customers, start building that brand, and uh, you know, not to mention kind of boost your own motivation to, kind of the, to see that you actually got sales. So I'm going to set up shipping rates that way. So remember that these, uh, you know, setting up shipping rates is only half the battle for the shipping stuff. You also need to set your product weights. And again, I like to do everything in terms of an, uh, an easy number. So I'm going to set up a free plus shipping rate here, and I'll just do a couple of examples, and then I'll... Uh, I think you'll probably get it at that point. So anything between one pound and one pound, so anything that weighs one pound is going to be charged $9.95 for shipping. Okay. Now we need to say, okay, so what if, so let's say you have a, a piece of jewelry that you say weighs one pound, and what happens if they add two to the cart? Well, then you'll have a two pound order weight, and we don't have a two pound rule. So we need to add a shipping rate. And again, remember, it's add a shipping rate based on order weight. And you know, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it standard shipping because that's what they say and now we need to make that rule for two so maybe if they buy two it's going to be uh, 1895 shipping okay and then what what happens if they were to buy three 
Well, there's no rule for three, so let's just make this rule. We're just editing this existing one. And 3.0 to 3.0, and that's going to be uh, 27.95. Now, yes, these shipping prices are uh, are large numbers. Remember, these are free plus shipping items. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's what we're going to load into our store, at least for the most part. So uh, there you go. You know, we're going to want to create more rules for the sake of time here. I'm not going to uh, to show you, you know, building rules for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds, etc. You know, I'll often build, you know, maybe 20 rules. Then you also want to have a catch-all rule, which basically, you know, let's say someone were to create, uh, let's say we ended with this and someone added four pounds worth of product to their store. They would actually get charged zero dollars shipping because there's no rule. So we do need a rule that's kind of like a catch-all, and that would look kind of something like this. Let's say we stop at three pounds. Then we're going to want to have a, uh, a rule that basically goes from 3.01 all the way up to, you know, 9,000 pounds. Obviously, no one's going to buy something 9,000 pounds. But this is just kind of a catch-all to say, you know, if someone does have a really big order, you know, then they're going to pay, uh, you know, $50 shipping or, or whatever. You know, I'm just making up a number here. But you see that you need to have every combination set up. So we have one as the minimum and 9,999 as the maximum. Um, you could bet that, you know, there's not going to be any combination that doesn't fall within here. So you're covered. Uh, you want to do the same thing for international shipping, obviously, based it on the rates that you um, are able to send internationally. So that's all you really need to do on this page. Um, you want to make sure you set up your shipping rules and you're going to absolutely want to be going back and forth between your shipping rules and your products to assign a, uh, a weight that's going to meet these rules. So once we start adding products, I'll come back to this section and show it to you again. So moving forward, we're on to the taxes section. And, uh, you know, at least if you're in the United States, they do this very, very, uh, they make this super easy for you. So if you register as California, then they're going to be charging tax in California because that's what you're responsible to do. So you don't even need to touch this. If you're in the United States, just leave this. This is good as it is. Uh, notifications, we don't need to change this really, but what we can do is customize the email templates that get sent out. For example, when an order confirmation email goes out, we could change the text in here um, and you know, we could put our own language in if we want or we can put you know, anything. We could actually edit, edit the code if you're comfortable doing that. But this is just simple, you know, if I wanted to, to say something like, uh, you know, if I just wanted to, you know, say thank you so much, you know, I could do that. You know, I could put in whatever text I want. This is what's going to be placed in the order confirmation email that someone receives after they place an order in the store. There's some other templates here too, like shipping confirmation, shipping update, uh, customer account creation, all that other stuff. Um, you could edit the templates in here. You don't even need to touch the code. So that's good. Uh, files, you know, you don't really need to worry about. Account, um, you know, here's where you're going to pick a plan. Um, and let's talk about the plans real quick. You got a $29 plan and you have a $79 plan. You're going to pick one of those two to start. The main difference is uh, you get a slightly better credit card fee here. So here's 2.6% as opposed to 2.9%. So this one's a little bit better. Um, and then also uh, the big thing is you get reports. So there is a report section here. And it's got a ton of useful uh, stuff here. Just the very least, you know, shows you gross sales by product. So, you know, how many sales and how much money you made per product. But there's a lot of other great uh, information in here. It's worth the $50 difference in terms of your, uh, your store plan. So you get a better credit card rate and you get the, uh, the full reports. Certainly is worth the $79 a month. If you're uh, trying to do this as cheap as possible, the $29 plan will be fine. You're just going to spend more time pulling the data instead of looking at these great reports. So, uh, you know, that's your call. And uh, so back on accounts, another cool thing here is you could add users. So let's say you want to add your virtual assistant or you want to add your partner or you want to add your customer service person, whatever. You could add them. All you need is a name and an email address and they'll get sent their own, um, their own, uh, well, they get an invitation to create their own account. So uh, then the last thing here is online store. This is where we're going to put in our SEO related title and meta description. So, uh, you know, you just basically going to put in the uh, store name. And what I like to do is put in the keywords related to my, uh, to my niche. So I'm just trying to get golf shirts and golf equipment. That's what I think I'm going to be selling. Um, so I'm putting that in here and I'm going to just put in a little short uh, description here. Golf King is the leader in uh, online golf t-shirts and equipment. Okay, to save this, uh, so Google Analytics. We're going to want to set up Google Analytics and uh, it's super easy to do that. 
So all we need to do is uh, go to Google Analytics. I'm gonna go there real quick. And if you've never used or heard of Google Analytics, it is the industry leader in terms of website metrics. So stuff like you know page visits and number of unique uh, users and how long people have stayed on the site and you know what the bounce rate is and all that other uh, you know all that other really cool stuff that is um, all accessible through Google Analytics. Not to mention you're going to see how to do it in a second. There is also the ability to. Um, there's also the ability to add e-commerce analytics, and that is super powerful. You know, that's going to show you total sales. It's going to show you, uh, you know, average quantity per sale. It's going to tell you where your sales are coming from in terms of Facebook ads. You know, which campaign um, are they coming from? Search? Are they coming from Twitter? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Super powerful stuff. You know, so you really want to enable uh, Google Analytics setup. So uh, all we need to do to do that is just create a free, uh, a free Google Analytics account. If you have any, um, you know, any uh, Google account, then you already have the ability to create a Google Analytics account. So uh, I'm just in the uh, the other screen right now, just kind of building a new um, a new Google Analytics account, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so uh, here is the Google Analytics code, and basically all I did was create my uh, my golf store site inside of here, and as soon as I finished uh, signing up for it, it spits out this uh, this tracking code. So all I need to do is select the entire thing inside here, and uh, you know just for your own education, this is your Google Analytics ID. So select this whole thing, copy it, and all you need to do is actually just paste the code right inside here. So I'm just pasting in that code that you just saw, and now I'm saving it, and now it's gonna give me some other options. So here you go, use enhanced e-commerce. So we're gonna check this, and we're gonna save it. So now that we have uh, enhanced e-commerce checked here, we also need to turn it on inside of Google Analytics. And to do that, all you need to do is click Admin, and then e-commerce settings, and you're simply gonna turn everything on. Okay, so I just pressed on three times, and now I'm saving it, and now I'm done. Google Analytics is now installed. I'm going to be capturing all traffic data, every you know, all the important pieces of information that you need to know in terms of driving traffic. That's all going to live inside of Google Analytics. Uh, you know, like I said, it's the consensus industry best tracking uh, setup, and it's completely free. So this also there's a storefront password. That's because we didn't pick a plan yet. You know, once we pick a plan, then uh, you know when you you wouldn't have a password on the site. You know, it would just load right into here. So we'll do that a little bit later. So that's it. That's all the options that you need to worry about. Uh, again, we'll come, we'll come back to checkout. Uh, we're going to want to paste some uh, conversion tracking code here, and we're also going to come back to shipping and uh, create more rules if we have to. So um, with that being said, our site is pretty much good to go. We need to do a couple of more things. We, are, we could set up a custom domain. And uh, you know, for the sake of, uh, of time here, I'm not going to show you exactly how to do that, but all you need to do is just click register a new domain. You know, you could buy a domain, it's $13. Um, and all you need to do is, you know, buy your actual .com domain. And I definitely recommend it being .com rather than any of these other ones. .com is just going to give you, uh, people are going to feel more comfortable, higher trust when you have this .com. So you'll go and buy the domain here. And once you're done, you're going to be able to actually uh, change your store instead of just this. Let's say you buy golfking.com. Once you set that up, it's just going to be golfking.com, and that would be your uh, your site or golfking.com slash admin. You know, whatever your domain is slash admin, that's going to bring you to your um, your Shopify dashboard. You know, again, this is your home base. This is where you're going to see all your stats, and uh, this will always be your site as well, the dot myshopify.com. But uh, you know, when you get that domain, it's pretty much just um, you know a mask or a redirect. So you'll, want to, you'll definitely want to set up that domain. And all you got to do is just, again, click Buy New Domain here. It's only $13 a year. So, uh, you know, it's totally a necessity. If I saw a site uh, kind of advertising this way, I might feel a little bit uh, less trustworthy because I would think, why couldn't they even buy a domain? So you definitely want to have a domain on there. Um, so actually, there's a, a couple other things that we need to, uh, to do to customize it to finish off, and that's obviously build our navigation. So the pages that we have on here, I mean, the, uh, the links that we have up here, you can see they're controlled by the navigation section. And this is in online store and then navigation. 
So you have two menus here. You have a footer menu and a main menu, and this is dependent on your theme. This theme has two uh, menus. Maybe your theme might only have one, uh, but either way, this is where you would edit your menus. So let's say we want to, uh, let's say we just, we don't want to have uh, blog up here. All we got to do is go to edit menu and you see blog. We could literally just press the trash and save it. Now when you check our site again, reload it, this blog thing will go away. So you can, you can customize your navigation. Maybe you want to um, add more pages. Well, let's say you want to add a page that every site needs, and that is a contact form. So you go to pages and you click add page and you call it uh, you know, whatever you want, contact us, contact page, whatever. And then any theme that is uh, you know, good is going to have a contact page temp uh, template. So if you click this template over here, you're gonna see page.contact. And all that's gonna do is, and you see we didn't put any content in here. I'll show you what this page is gonna look like. So you save it, and we're gonna view this uh, page. Because we're using this template, the contact page template, it's going to put in the contact form automatically for us. So super easy. We don't need to do anything. Now we have at the, you know, in the most basic form, here is your customer support, right? It's an email uh, form that's going to go directly to the email that you used when you signed up with Shopify. So great. Uh, we'll save that. Now it's great that we have this page, but it's nowhere to be found. So we need to add it to our navigation. So we're going to go here again, edit menu. And now we're going to add a menu item. Now we're going to go and look at the different options we have. We could do a web address, like you know any any URL. Uh, but we're going to do a page, and we're going to select the page. Obviously, contact us, and we're going to just put right up here, contact. And we'll press save, and now we'll come back to our site. Uh, we will reload the page, and you'll see the contact link right up here, going directly to your contact form. So there you go. Now you have your navigation set up. Your catalog is simply just a list of your products. Um, obviously about us page that kind of gets built automatically so to edit that as you might guess it's in pages and then about us and here is where you'll write your story and we'll reload this page and here is the text right so it's super easy you know don't uh, don't be worried about any of this it's you know very very straightforward very easy to uh, to kind of figure out um, we covered most of what we need to do, obviously, outside of product. So um, the next step after we set up our store, kind of customized our, our pages, set up our contact, you know, made a nice design, is to, of course, find product. So that's a whole thing in itself. Uh, and uh, we'll save that for the next video that will cover, you know, kind of how to do product research, where to look for product, what to look for in a product, and then, of course, how to add it to your store and how to configure shipping rates for it. So uh, we will be back to do that shortly.